Hey guys, welcome to March. Uh, <laughs> days are getting warmer, even here in upstate New York, which means I got a lot of work to do. The subject of today's video is gonna be the R90 motor. In my previous video with the taillights, I talked about how I was waiting until I got enough done on that motor in order to show you guys a video. So today I am planning to remove the timing cover, pulling the timing chain off and the crankshaft out uh, so that we can inspect the main bearings and see what we got in there. So uh, hold on tight. <laughs> Long story short, I recorded pulling all that stuff off, but haven't shown you guys up till now because really that would feel like a little anticlimactic to you know take the engine partially apart. Uh, but I have gone through, you can see some parts over here, but I removed the clutch, I removed the starter motor, I've taken the alternator off, the diode board, the ignition points, the uh, crankcase breather, and then finally the cylinders, uh, followed by the pistons. So on these airhead motors, you have to press the wrist pins out. They don't just slide out like some other bikes do. And I know that I've been a bit of a proponent against all of these specialty tools needed for these bikes. Uh, but when it's coming to internal engine parts, uh, you know, it's probably worth springing for. Um, I just use some sockets and some long bolts to remove the wrist pins. But now when I go to put it back together, I'm going to have an actual wrist pin press tool to make sure that that's done properly. You see there are the lifters and the connecting rods for the motor. If you watched the earlier videos, you saw that I removed the heads and in doing so pulled the rocker arms out of them. When I inspected those, you would have seen that some of them had pitting from where they contacted the push rods. Now I was hoping that the lifters would be in the same situation. And in fact, the first one that I pulled this is the right intake, looks pretty good. You can see it kind of reflected there, a nice surface. However, as I got further and further in, I noticed that same pitting. Now, that doesn't mean that my camshaft is bad. Typically, these things are gonna wear before the camshaft does, but I'm hoping. Now, my connecting rods, I had previously measured out the small bore and found that uh, the surface was good and they measure out nicely. So I was hoping that maybe the pitting and stuff was limited to just the valve train. But when I pulled the connecting rod off, you can see I got a nice big score right in the middle there. Additionally, I've bought a lot of specialty engine tools like this guy, which is a puller designed specifically to remove this timing cover. What I'm gonna to have to do here is take out all of the bolts that are holding the timing cover on, and then actually use some torches to heat the thing up to like 250, 300 degrees, uh, so that the aluminum expands over the steel enough that this will come out. Probably could just take a map gas torch and like heat this area and it should just kind of pop off. But you know, I bought the fancy tool, I'm gonna use it. Looking at the timing chain setup, um, things don't look too bad at first glance, but then there's little things like there's a nice little chunk of material removed from this main bearing carrier where the timing chain has been making contact with it. Uh, so it seems as though perhaps our tensioner is not doing its job. It, you know, it's a good thing that we're going this far because already we're seeing things that should be replaced. And one thing that I'm gonna to have to do is remove this timing chain before I can pull the nose bearing and the sprocket off. Normally you'd use a pair of bolt cutters just to snip through it. But in this case, I don't have a pair of those. So I'm gonna use a Dremel and try to re maybe remove the head of a pin and push it out the back. Uh, barring that, I'll just, you know, cut through all three of these pieces. All right, that took a lot of work to get done, but it's there. 
Little Dremel work. No more timing chain. You know, as soon as I decided that we were pulling the crank, I had already figured that we'd be replacing this thing and I have a new one on its way. Uh, <laughs> top dead center is not really going to matter too much anymore, huh? You know, using a grinder or a Dremel, it's not great for engine internals, but this stuff's going to get fully cleaned up before everything goes back together anyway, so I'm not super concerned about that. All right, now I'm going to do this crankshaft sprocket and nose bearing. Again, I'm using some specialty tools, including this part, which is uh, a portion of the tool we used to remove the timing cover. So that goes over the news, nose uh, of the crankshaft and then these pullers. I'm going to slide into place here. Here's our crankshaft sprocket. It looks pretty nice. So next thing that I gotta do is remove the main bearing carrier, remove the crankshaft. Uh, I also have to pull the flywheel on the backside, the oil pump. But the reason that I've left the flywheel on so long is because I was curious about what's called the end play on the crankshaft. So uh, this here is a little dial and that'll tell me how far the crankshaft is able to move back and forth. Uh, it's not really something I need to know right now since it's getting taken apart anyway, but like, I, I'm just curious. We'll see. So I will be honest with you, this dial caliper really isn't fine enough of an instrument to accurately measure this, but uh, you know, in just in order to get a good sense of where we're at, push the crankshaft all the way to the back as much as I can. We're at about 71 there. And now I just do the opposite. I pull it forward as much as I can, just pulling on the crankshaft itself through the holes. We end up uh, around 75 and a half or so. So that is 0 0.004, we'll call it 45, 0 0.0045 inches because this is a standard or an imperial, not a metric. Uh, if you pop that into Google, you get a little over 0.1 millimeter, which is actually pretty good. Um, you want somewhere between 0 0.08 and 0 0.16 millimeters for the in play. So that's a good sign. Throw these away. The flywheel bolts are tortille, so you cannot use these over again. Um, oh, that one's a little oily. I have to look into that. Well, it looks like I've got two that have a bit of an oil leak. Uh, you do not want oil coming out here, messing up your clutch. I've removed the flywheel. You can see here's the backside of the crankshaft, the rear main seal. Uh, this is the thrust washer. Uh, that is uh, one of the washers that decides the crankshaft end play, the thing that I just measured. And under this cover is the oil pump, which I need to open up and take out before I can get the camshaft out. Uh, the oil pump is run off the back of the camshaft. Now you can see there's Phillips head screws in here, which Anybody that's familiar with vintage motorcycles knows that Phillips head screws have a tendency to strip out when they've been in place for like 50 years. So I'm gonna use this handy tool to make sure that that doesn't happen. There's the oil pump. So the oil pump looks pretty 
Okay, I can see some scoring and stuff. But the surfaces that I can see look all right. But I'm gonna take measurements and actually confirm whether or not that oil pump is still good or not. Uh, I am replacing it regardless, but considering what the connecting rod bearings look like, I have a feeling that that's probably out of spec. So we look in our BMW shop manual for the numbers that we need right there to measure our pump. And so we need some feeler gauges. Mm, these will do. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, already we're oversized. That shouldn't fit in there. Unsurprisingly, this oil pump doesn't really measure out that well, so I'm thinking, you know, that could have something to do with why the bearings are in the conditions that they are, why the lifters look like they do. shaft is out. You can see that on these camshafts there's these kind of strange waveforms. And that is typical of these bikes. So that's not something to worry about. All right, I think it's about time for the big finale. I'm gonna pull the crankshaft out. Essentially what I need to do is remove this entire assembly called the front bearing carrier. Take off these nuts, uh, install puller using these three holes here, heat the entire engine case itself up to about 275 degrees, and that will expand the aluminum enough for this piece to be able to be pulled out. Okay, I've got the puller mounted on the bearing carrier, and now all I have left to do is uh, heat up the case till it's hot enough. Uh, now, you probably want to do this in an oven because that's, you know, makes sense. But in this case, this is what I got. main bearing carrier removed. Now all I gotta do is pull the crank. Let's take a look at that rear bearing. Honestly, it looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, especially because I can't really get the lens that close. You know, I don't see any scoring or anything. There's a little bit of a, you can see there's a little bit of markings there and it appears it might be like a score, but overall a lot better than the connecting rods were, so. Honestly, I think that uh, engine could have run a very long time without any further issues. It probably could have put like tens of thousands of miles on it still. But like I said, if we're going this far, we might as well go all the way. So let's take a look at our front bearing too. 
Well, front bearing is kind of similar. It's uh, not really in too bad a shape. Again, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it on the camera, but it's mostly smooth with some scoring, especially up here on the front edge. Flip it over and see the other side. Ooh, that is just hot enough to be uncomfortable. Yeah, again, really not too bad, but there is a little scoring on the front end, so. Yeah, I mean, I would have, uh, had I known before taking the engine apart that that was what the bearings looked like, I would have made the call to replace them. So I'm glad that I went through that effort. I've got an empty engine block. Nothing more to do with this one than give it a really good clean paint job and then we can start putting things back together. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little measuring on that crankshaft, make sure all the journals are still good. That'll determine what kind of main bearings and connecting rod bearings I'll need to buy in order to replace it. Uh, additionally, these things called thrust washers are in here. And they are what dictate the end plate of the crankshaft, so I'll need to pick up a couple of those as well. But, yeah, I feel accomplished after that one, I'll tell you what. All right, well, with that, I'm going to call it an evening. So I figure that's a good end to the video, too. Thanks for watching. I hope you stick around. We're kind of at the turning point of this video series where things are going to start being put back on rather than taken apart. All right, well, see you later.